Hello and welcome to another episode in the Godot Basics tutorial series. In this episode, we will be taking a look at the dry and kiss principle. So no matter the industry, programmers are sought after to do three things. One, we solve a problem. And in this series, if you're a beginner, you just have the basics. And believe it or not, knowing the basics is enough to solve many problems with game programming. Now what we're going to focus for in the next six episodes is writing good code. Good code has three things. One, it's maintainable. Two, it's simple. And three, it's clean. Now the last thing you should focus on is optimization. However, we will not be looking into that in this series. Now, why exactly is it important for programmers to write clean, simple, and maintainable code? Well, for one, you are writing for humans, and as a matter of fact, that's the most important reason why you're writing clean, simple, and maintainable code. Because either other people on your team have to read your code, or when you come back to your code six months or a year later, you're not going to remember exactly what you wrote. Now, lucky for us, there is a standard for writing clean code. And the three standards, or rather the three principles I'm going to go over with you, are the dry principle, the kiss principle, and the solid principle. Now in this episode, we'll be going over the dry principle and the kiss principle. However, we're going to dedicate five episodes to the solid principle. Dry is an acronym, and the acronym stands for Don't Repeat Yourself. It's self-explanatory. It just means don't do code duplication when writing code. Now, the reason we use the dry principle is because for one thing, we lower the code count of our class. It's not always the case, but in most cases, less lines is equal to cleaner, simple, and maintainable code. Obviously, the less lines of code you have to read, the easier your understanding of what's going on in the code is. Now, there is a unspoken room. There is an average. So you do want to keep your classes 200 lines per class, and that doesn't include the spaces. And in some other programming languages, it does not include the squarely bracket. However, this is not a hard rule. You can go above and below, but you can use this as a standard. When writing your classes, if you're going above 200 lines, you may need to do something about that. And one thing to reduce the amount of lines you have in your code is to look and see if you have code duplication. Another thing that the dry principle solves is code reusability. That's because the solution we'll look at later requires us to actually isolate our repeated code. And because our code is isolated, we can therefore reuse it. Now, in some cases, and it's rare, but in some cases, our code may grow while using the dry principle. However, the benefits of using the dry principle principle outweighs the negatives. In this case, the negative is that our code got bigger. Moving on, let's go over what a code smell is. A code smell is a terminology that indicates that the code source has a deeper underlying problem. So if your code is breaking the dry principle, it's actually fairly easy to spot. If you see code duplication in your classes or even among multiple classes, you, you therefore know that you are breaking the dry principle. Now there is a solution. If code is repeated, put the duplicated code inside a function. Now what we call this is code refactoring and code refactoring is changing code without changing the behavior of your code. Understanding and implementing the dry principle is a skill and like all skills, they need to be trained. The more you code, the more you practice, the more you program for games, the more you will start seeing code duplication. And one thing I would like to point out is to not feel discouraged if you're not seeing the code duplication. It will take time. Now the next principle is the KISS principle. And KISS is another acronym. And it stands for Keep It Simple Silly. Some people use the stupid at the end, but I like to keep it positive. So keep it simple silly. And it is self-explanatory and also very vague. Now what the KISS principle is trying to solve is untangling complex code, therefore making it easier to read code. Now a common KISS code smell is when you're reading code and it's either complicated or hard to follow. Sometimes if you find yourself asking in your mind, what's going on? I can't follow this code. I'm super confused with what I'm reading right now. Then you have a good indicator that the KISS principle has been broken. 
To solve the KISS principle, one thing is to refactor your code. And I don't mean by putting your code inside a function, but trying other alternative codes that do the same job. Now, how exactly do you refactor complex code? Well, there is no straight answer. There is no correct answer. It really just depends. In reality, what you will find yourself doing is if the code is complicated, you look at it and you say, how else can I write this? You write it, you see if that improves, and if it hasn't, you just keep doing that. We call that iterating code. And basically, you just play around with other ways of writing code until you get to a solution that is less complex. In a sense, since you're a beginner, you will find out that by going through trial by fire, you will come across a solution. Now again, to get good at the KISS principle, considering it's a vague principle, it does take time and practice. The more you program, the better your intuition will get. Now do not feel discouraged if you're not seeing a better solution to the way you're writing code. The more you write, the easier you'll spot it in time because over time you're going to say to yourself, wow, this is really hard to read. Or, wow, this is really hard to write. How can I make this easier? Now let's go ahead and take a look at some code examples for both the dry principle and the kiss principle. Let's take a look at this class. As you can see here, we have a player health and it's an integer. Now in this class, it looks like what we want to do is just mess around with the player health. Now obviously, what we have is a bad implementation because for one thing, we've already broken the dry principle. We've already repeated ourselves. Now you may be asking, it's okay to do it once or twice, but no, the dry principle states that if you are repeating yourself, you need to fix it. And it makes more sense when I show you a different example. So even though it looks like this is a waste of time and going to show you a solution that basically writes more code in the long run, it will be healthy for your game. So again, we're repeating code. Now in this case, what we do is we create a function and in this case, we call it default player health. Now, as you can see through the name of our function, we've already improved our code. For one thing, we've given intention that this function, in fact, has a value or rather assigns a value to our player health and it will assign it our intended default value when we start the game. When we want to use it, we can use it in our ready virtual method or we can use it in our custom function and now the healthy thing is obviously with all functions is that when we edit code we only have to edit one line of code and yet we propagate to everything that uses our function in this example we have two functions however what if we have more what if we had 10 well in this example if you wanted to do 80 you'd have to look at your code and find all 10 and make sure you did it perfectly because what if by accident you accidentally hit the seven well this is one reason a good reason that the dry principle exists this is the reason why we do not repeat ourselves it's to avoid mistakes at the same time by doing this our code is now maintainable as in it's easier to maintain this class. It's easier to edit and use our player health, in this case a default player health. Now let's look at a second example. In this case, now what we have is a player health that can only be an integer and we have a variable is hard mode equal to true. This code is trying to show is that if our player is playing in hard mode, we start with the health 20. However, if our player is starting at any other mode besides hard mode, example normal mode, we want to assign them full health. Now, as you can see, we have a different type of code duplication. Not only are we repeating the assignment to our player health, but we're also copying the if statement. And that's because one, when we start the script, we want to assign a value, but two, in our custom code, look at that. We're doing the same exact thing. We're writing our code twice. Once for our if statement, or rather the way we assign a value to our player health, and two, the actual assignment to the player health variable. So there is two things we need to fix, and let's take a look at that. So the first thing we need to fix is our if statement loop, and the second thing we need to fix is our player health. So to fix our if statement loop, we take that code out and we put it in a function. In this case, we put it in the reset player health. Now we should change the name, but for the sake of this example, I'm going to keep the function name the same. 
Now, as you can see here, our ready function doesn't have an if statement anymore, but rather we call the function that has the if statement. And in our if statement, we have our logic. In this case, if we are in hard mode, we actually call the function default player health and we assign it 20. Else, we just call the default function. Now, as you can see here, we're also solving the second problem. The second problem being that we hard coded an assignment to our property value and instead we pass that into a function. Now, on top of that, we've also enhanced our function. So our function originally did not take in a parameter. Now, as you can see here, our name is the same, but we added a parameter with the default value. I went ahead and changed that to 100. And as you can see here, we're assigning whatever we're being passed in our parameter. This allows two things. One, it allows us to customize what our default value is. So in this case, since we aren't really hard coding anything, we can change what we pass into our player health. This is good because if we want to actually use the player health function, or rather the default player health function in other areas of our code, we don't have to do it by hand anymore. By hand, I mean actually type it out. Instead, what we do is we just call the function and we let the function handle it. And this is how we fix code duplication. So again, one, our ready function had an if statement, and instead we passed that logic to a function and we can call it. And on top of that, a reset function actually does this for us already. So if we need to reset our player health anywhere else in the code, we just call this function. Now, this is what we call code reusability. Code reusability because instead of hard coding our if statement, we've isolated it to one function. And because it's isolated to one function, we are able to use this function anywhere in our code and it will be consistent throughout. And if we want to make modifications instead of modifying in two locations, for example, in our bad example, if I wanted to change the hard mode player to 10, I would need to look through all the code and do that. So instead of doing that, by isolating it to one function by following the dry principle, we just have to edit one line of code. Now on top of that, our function, we can also edit its default value in one place compared to the bad version where we have to edit in two places. Now I hope through this example, you can see why the dry method helps us write clean, simple, and maintainable code and in this case, reusable code. Now I went over time, so in the next episode, we will be taking a look at the KISS principle in code, and that one's gonna be quite a doozy. So it does make sense to split it into two episodes. Thank you for your time, and thank you for joining me in this episode. If you have any comments, or have any questions that need clarifying, please feel free to post them in the comments section. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Have an amazing day.